Why, hello everybody, Eternal Flame here, and today we are here to do a chapter review of 250, yeah, that's right, the big 250. Shujutsu Kaisen has made it quite far, and I'm honestly quite happy with how far it's actually made it. Also, I just want to remind y'all, remember to check out the official release when it does come out. So now we are going to return to the decisive battle in uninhabited demon-infested Shinjuku part 22. Perfect naming. Omega perfect naming. Truly perfection. Absolute perfection right there. Anyways, now that we got the naming meme out the way, let's get into this. As it starts by immediately explaining the domain expansion, and it's pretty clear I and a lot of people got the domain expansion wrong. Me and a lot of people thought that every single one of the swords that we see in the domain expansion is actually just a separate curse technique and that Yuda had copied over hundreds of curse technique. However, the beginning narration actually goes on to fully explain how Yuda Akotsu's domain fully works. So I'm going to read that out now. Akotsu Yuda's all-encompassing unequivocal love allows him to choose any one of his copy technique to imbue the barrier with as the domain's sure hit effect. His remaining copy techniques are scattered randomly among the katanas within his domain. Only Akotsu can utilize them, but not even he knows which katana contains which technique until he grasps it for the first time. While each katana can only be used once, their number is infinite. So to give a basic breakdown on how this domain actually works, Yuda gets to decide which of his copied curse techniques becomes the sure hit of the domain. However, upon deciding which technique becomes the sure hit of the domain, he is no longer able to imbue that into one of the swords. It's more than likely that Yuda is not able to change the barrier and sure hit condition, so he has to stick with whatever one he does when he first releases the domain expansion. However, he's able to use each of the swords and use a curse technique through each of the swords. However, there is also a limit on it, that limit being he will never know which curse technique's in which sword until he actually picks it up directly. Furthermore, there's an infinite amount of swords, which means all of that time I spent counting how many swords there was in the last chapter was completely useless. Thank you, Gege. You are the absolute best. Now, how do I overall feel about this domain expansion? I'm not entirely sure yet. It's still pretty powerful, but I think it's much less powerful than what I thought it actually was. However, I want to see what you guys think about it. Do you guys think this is a better domain, a worse domain? I want to see what you guys' opinions are down below. As is then, we see Yuda use Drew's curse technique in order to launch several small Rikas right towards Sukuna as a distraction for Yuji to land two of his soul punches on Sukuna's body. Which that's going to be very, very important later, but I'm going to get into that more later into the chapter when we get that explanation. As Rika begins to rush down on Sukuna, and Sukuna just dodges pretty easily. Or at least Sukuna believed he dodged until he felt one of Yuda's copy curse techniques, which allows him to create a barrier that will always allow Rika to land a sure hit as a result of that. As we see Yuda staring down Sakuna, and we get Sakuna having an internal dialogue, where Sakuna directly says, After my fight with Gojo Satsuru, not only am I still unable to expand my domain, but the effects of my reverse curse technique remain sluggish. At this point, my total curse energy likely matches the cursed brat. On top of that, maintaining Hollow Wicker Basket renders me unable to use the world by secting Dismantle, after extending the target of my technique. And then... Now this does teach us quite a bit, Sakuna has now been cut down to a half, maybe even a third of his total cursed energy. Now the reason that I say that amount is purely because of the fact Yuda directly says that Sakuna has more than double his amount of cursed energy, which means it's more than two times, it could be around three times, we don't really know, but this is Yuda's speculation, and two times is likely the bare minimum. However, this does mean Yuda has similar amounts of cursed energy to Sakuna right now. Furthermore, it's seeming more and more likely that the entire full restore that Sakuna did to return to his original body only existed so he could get the two arms and extra mouth, as well as restore basically the external damage that was done to his body, rather than things like the brain, as well as restoring his cursed energy, which that settles what that full restore does down in the dirt. Finally, Sakuna is unable to use the world slash because his hands are busy and he's unable to use the hand mouth, and the second he tries to use his other hands, he will have to get bombarded by attacks, which basically makes him completely unable to use the world dissecting slash that he has access to. So yeah, Sakuna's not really in a good spot at all right now. However, it's gonna get worse for Sakuna as Rika literally picks Yuji up like a football and throws Yuji right at them while Sakuna at the same time has to block a hit from Yuda. And Yuji directly kicks Sakuna in the arms while Yuda at the same time slashes at Sakuna. And we get even more internal dialogue from Sakuna, as Sakuna says, there's this. It's the same logic behind his effective attacks against the patch face cursed spirit. He can sense it. He's aiming directly for the barrier between my soul and Fushiguro Megami's. He's rousing Fushiguro Megami's soul that was submerged by the bath, and disrupting the harmony between this body and myself. Every time I take a blow from this brat, my curse energy output falls, my curse energy output falls, and my control of this body weakens. 
they'll just keep chipping away until I can no longer maintain Hollow Wicker Basket, which reveals the real risk, their desire to use the Angel's Technique Jacob's Ladder to eradicate the curse object within Fushiguro Megami. Now, this means these soul punches that Yuji has been doing is actually much more overpowered than I gave it credit for in its own video. And I think I need to make another video fully explaining it, but I am going to explain how it works here. But I'm going to spend another video just explaining how it works fully as well as what this could mean for the plot. Now, something I did get wrong, though, was I assumed that Yuji could only do this from his punches. However, it's been proven directly here that Yuji is also able to do it from his legs as well and that's even more overpowered. Now, I'm not as sure about it because the Soul Shake effect only seems to happen when Yuji actually grabs onto Sakuna's hand. However, it's fully possible that Yuji can just do it all throughout his body and it's not specifically limited to his punches, but I do want to note that nonetheless. But these Soul Punches now do two separate things. The first thing that this directly does is break the barrier further and further between the soul of Fushiguro Megami as well as Sakuna just shattering the bath more and more. It's not fully shattered yet, but it's slowly breaking away at the barrier and slowly waking up Megumi more and more. However, it also has a direct second effect. Each of Yuji's punches now directly weakens Sakuna's cursed energy output on top of this. The reason why I say these are separate effects is because of the fact Sakuna says my cursed energy output falls and my control of this body weakens. This is also something we've actually seen in the past happen before, but not in this same method. Back in chapter 215, it was directly stated that Megami was weakening Sakuna's cursed energy output to an extremely low percentage. This was done via suppressing his soul and fighting back. Now Yuji is effectively able to do this to other people by punching them. Keep that in mind. So to put this into perspective, Yuji's punches are able to directly damage the soul now, as well as weaken opponent's cursed energy output. Basically, anytime you're getting punched directly by Yuji, you're now going to be weaker and weaker. And here is the thing as well. This isn't a specific vessel thing because the effect of waking up Megumi is stated to be different of an effect than his actual curse energy output falling. It's more like Yuji is slowly chipping away at Sakuna's soul and damaging Sakuna's soul in order to allow Megami to get more and more of a chance to fight back against Sakuna. Now, I will talk more about this in a separate video, but yeah, that's where I'm basically going to end off that explanation for now but this is going to be very useful. Furthermore, we also know that the entire purpose of this is to weaken Sakuna's soul enough to the point where we can no longer activate Hollow Wicker Basket, so that Sakuna and his weakened cursed object that his soul is stored inside of being the finger is eradicated by the angel's curse technique. Which does make me wonder if the final finger that Sakuna was talking about a while back was actually just already eradicated and their testing subject in order to test if this plan would work or not, but that's for us to see in the future, that's just a random theory. As then the battle continues, with Sakuna about to try and throw Yuji into one of Yuda's blows, however, Yuda reveals cursed speech and tells Sakuna not to move, before quickly grabbing another sword and smacking Sakuna straight in the face with another Finn Icebreaker. And this was a really, really good way to show off how strong Yuda's domain is and how versatile it is, because even with the drawback of him never knowing the curse technique, if he is quickly able to pick up the sword beforehand, then it, this doesn't really matter, because he'll be able to cycle through them on time. As it's then right after Rika tries to go in for a hit while Sakuna's being launched back from the Finn Icebreaker, with Sakuna being launched into the ground, as Yuda and Yuji are completely relentless, but Sakuna immediately activates a wave of dismant that he launches at both Yuda and Yuji Itadori with him right after catching a punch from Rika and kicking Rika away. As at the same time, Sakuna has another internal dialogue, where he says, If I don't make direct contacts, I won't leave a fatal wound, just as it was with him. Although, I wouldn't say they surpass him in toughness. It's not just because of my diminished curse energy output from the fight with Satoru Gojo, either. All the sorcerers that have shown up from Jujutsu High have extremely tight defenses. And then there's the Brat's reverse curse technique, not to mention this domain itself. The sure hit effect is narrow to apply to myself and only me. Was he capable of this from the beginning? Something like this requires a very sophisticated barrier technique. Now, this is offer quite a lot, like Ryu durability upscale, which, I mean, Ryu being durable is not really a surprise. If you've read Sendai Colony, one of the main impressions you're going to get from Ryu is that he is durable, as well as Sakuna directly noting how tight all of their defenses is, which is more than likely a result of them all upgrading their curse energy reinforcement levels. Now, funnily enough, I want to talk a little bit about this barrier, because this barrier is very, very important. I think Yuda only had access to it after he watched Sakuna do it, because funnily enough, in a similar video, I kind of already called this out, where I was talking about Gojo's final lesson to Hakari, Yuda, and Yuji. 
Now, I should note this. I did apply who this lesson would apply to wrong because I thought it would apply to Hakari and Hakari having the potential of having the ability to activate jackpots on everybody, but this was an even easier way to apply it, where it's only applying the sure hit to Sakuna directly. Now, this was something we already knew was possible because both Sakuna did it and Dagon did it. However, it's been super rare when we actually see it. However, that kind of just shows something about Dagon's domain skill because Dagon was the only other sorcerer that we knew could make the sure hit applied to things like not everything guaranteed in the domain because everyone else, it always seemed to be everyone in the domain, even Kenjaku. Though that doesn't make sense for Dagon considering Dagon was the same person who kept their domain active for straight up a day. Dagon was also the same person who had the ability to specify how much or how little percentage of a sure hit went after the opponent. But now Yuda is also added to this list of people who are able to choose who the sure hit directly goes after or not, rather than just making it go after everyone. As Sakuna then directly asks them, just what have you all been up to this past month? With Yuji about to say, hard work and determination, with Yuda just saying, we cheated. Oh, oh. They both had very different answers, and I find that kind of funny. I want to know why Yuda is saying we cheated, because there are so many things that could be possible, but I feel it's going to be for the future, like probably next chapter or a few chapters later. However, we go back to Yuda now having an internal dialogue, as well as Yuji having one. As Yuda says, if it weren't for the after effects of his battle with Gojo Sensei, we wouldn't have a second to spare to use our reverse curse technique, he would have annihilated us in an instant. And then Yuji says, it pains me to admit it, but we're up against the strongest source for right now. I don't even want to think about what will happen if we can't stop him here. And this supports something that I have been thinking for a while now. They can't let Sakuna go. They have to beat Sakuna right here and now, or Sakuna wins right here and now. Because if they just leave, Sakuna just fully recovers and they've lost their chance. They have to win now. As the battle then continues, with Yuda directly showing off that he now has access to Charles Bernard's technique, and he's actually able to see into the future while Yuji at the same time goes for an attack, while Sakuna is now internally counting the amount of curse techniques that they have access to, with him saying, The Angel's Jacob's Ladder. A space manipulation technique, a technique that creates an invoyable barrier on the path of the Shikigami, cursed speech, clairvoyance, and the limitless? No, he shouldn't be able to control it without the six eyes. Has he played all his cards? Even Sakuna will be caught off guard by a technique he hasn't seen used, which means that'll surely. As luck had blessed Yuta Akotsu, he picked up the right katana and used cleave on Sakuna's face, with Sakuna realizing that this was his own curse technique and there's no break week next week. Now this does confirm a few things. Number one, Yuda can't use the Limitless and the Six Eyes is not something you can copy. Now this has been a debate up in the community for a while and a lot of the evidence was actually leaning closer to you could copy the Six Eyes. However, Sakuna is implying right now that you can't and I'm pretty sure we can take Sakuna as basically the word of God of this point. However, there's still a percentage chance that he could be wrong. So I'm not going to say this is 100% for certain, but I am going to say it's pretty likely at least that Yuda can't at all use the Limitless because he doesn't have the six eyes like Sakuda is implying right now. Furthermore, it's now known that Yuda has direct access to Cleave, which is super insane because Cleave is a busted curse technique, as a lot of us know. Well, it might not be busted because I have an entire theory around this, or well, not I have an entire theory, but one of my friends have a theory that I'm going to create an entire video on inspired by them, but I'm going to do that one later in the week. And this, like, this chapter is really, really good. We get to see how many curse things that Yuda has copied, even though I don't think this is all of them quite yet. We get much more information on how Yuji's soul punches work than we got last week, which this is going to be such a good week to talk about. I hope you all have a good day, though. This is about everything I've left to say. This chapter was easily a 10 out of 10 for me. When it was just the spoilers and that translations, I actually didn't like it as much. But now that we have the full translation, I like it a lot more. However, that's just me. I'm Eternal Flame. I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm going to see you all later. Peace out. Bye. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I'm here to hook you up with some really, really good anime merch and merch for comic book lovers. Now, do you love Jujutsu Kaisen, Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, Marvel, DC, and all of the above? And do you have your own nerd stuff that you're into? Well, I got some good, good stuff for you today. As our friends at Fan Dominion are here to hook you up because they got the best merch. If you've been around here for a while, you'll know that they've been with our channel for a long, long time. So you can take it from me that they got good merch and they will hook you up with the highest quality merch. 
After all, I really, really recommend them. They got some really good merch, and I'm gonna hook you all up with something special. If you use the code TEF, really simple, really easy to remember, made it simple for all y'all, you get a 10% discount. Yeah, that's right, a 10% discount for all the merch you could possibly buy. And I guarantee you, you'll be happy with whatever you get. So, you guys make some money, I'll give you a discount, I make some money, we all get happy. Hope you all enjoy, and let's continue on with the rest of the video. Remember to check out Fandomian. Link in the description down below as well as our code.